Okay, welcome to another Kitsoft video tutorial. Today we're going to talk about modification sizing. This is a tutorial that um, you would have to call me and request specifically, and um, I would be able to email that to you. But I'm going to go ahead and do a video tutorial today about this modification sizing, and I think uh, you probably be able to pull some information out of it. So first thing is we're going to open our Kissoft um, program, and we're going to open Gear Pair One. This is cylindrical gear pair. We're going to turn our modifications on, modifications, and we're also going to turn our contact analysis on. This is the button that we are going to use for modification sizing. Okay. There's a couple things. When before we do that, we're going to do a sizing here in this tab to size our uh, modifications. And then we're going to go up to this tab, and we're going to run a small, I call it a design of experiments. Um, uh, if you were going to do a, you, you could call it a multilinear regression factorial, I guess. Um, but we're going to actually vary and cross-vary these values and try and get some uh, different peak-to-peak uh, -peak transmission errors. And we can also look at the... Uh, um, contact stress. So when we look at specifically what this is used for, and it's used specifically for noise and contact pattern optimization, okay? It's also used to size modifications for a specific load area. So say you have uh, shaft deformation and you need to move that load, you can use it for that. And you can do a uh, lifetime op optimization too. Maybe you have um, micro pitting or uh, some other high hertzian stress on a tooth flank that you need to adjust. In conditions one, you're going to set your uh, partial load calculations. You're also going to define whether this is cross uh, cross value values and the coefficients, or whether you're just going to run them one, two, three in in kind of a linear fashion. All right, this is what that means. If the option is increasing, so if you if you keep it checked, it basically is giving you more options for each um, combination. So you're going to have a value plus a coefficient. Now, the coefficient is actually the factor. So the value is the number, say the amount of tip relief, and then the coefficient is the length of the tip relief. So if you if you say you want three different steps for, for the value, you'll get three different steps for the coefficient, and then you'll get three times three, there'll be nine solutions for each one of those. Okay? Uh, and then your base modifications, you'd bring those in, um, you'd import those, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Conditions two, then you define your number of steps for, for each mo type of modification. You give a min-max value, and then you talk about the min-max value of the coefficient. Okay? And then you get uh, tabular results, but you can also use uh, graphics. You can use um, this pie graph. Uh, you can use face load factor um, to try and decide which one of these is your best um, design. And the general approach is we're going to keep the number of uh, calculated variations small. We'll start with a large iteration for large load areas, and then we'll limit the number of variations to decrease the iteration width. So this is going to get you a faster calculation versus waiting for a long, long time. All right. This part of the presentation is done. Thank you for your attention, right? Um, now we're going to actually turn it on and we'll, we'll do an example. So, oops. Here we are in our KISSOFT program. And we're in our modifications tab. Incidentally, if we run this initially, we need to do a couple things here. We're going to go to details. We're going to say for high load capacity and factors. I'm going to change this from 13E to 13A because I'm going to assume I have a centered gear between two bearings right here. That's what this uh, diagram is showing. All right. I'm going to say it's a favorable contact pattern. It's not optimal, and there's not going to be any tooth trace modification. That means I'm not putting any crowning on it. And the reason I'm not is because my axis alignment, I'm just going to say, is aligned. All right. When I go to modifications, well, first I can run this, and I'll get a baseline of what our transmission error, 16.7, all right, right here, that's this number. I go to modifications, and I want to size this, 
And I'm going to do a tip relief, and I'm going to do a, a long profile. This is a big tooth, so I'm going to do a long profile modification. It'll be linear. Now that doesn't mean that it has to be that. You can look at arc. You can look at different uh, methods of doing this. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to grab this long profile modification. I'm going to calculate for both the gears, and this, these are the numbers that I get. 1.9, 154, and 42. I can change this diameter and make it, if I shorten this to 152, it actually will lengthen. I'll show you. 152, calculate. Uh, I said 152. Yeah, you see how it increased the length factor? So that's even a longer too. So the way it works is this D sub C A is the, the radius that you start your modification and the C sub O A or A A alpha A is the, uh, the actual amount of profile modification. So you start at that D sub C A which is the diameter and then this is the amount and then the length is a module times this length factor. All right. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to calculate that, and I'm going to accept. So now the program has given me, quote, unquote, an optimal um, gear tip relief for both the tooth, for, for both gears one and two on both flanks. So this is assuming forward and reverse uh, rotation. I can calculate this. Uh, I can see that I have a tooth form here. I can go to my contact analysis, and I can run this. Remember, I had 16.7. Now I'm at 4.3. Okay. In my modification sizing, I grab this modification sizing. I click on it. You can see I've got four tabs. I can cross-value these, and I'm going to import the modifications that I just did. And there they are. When I go to Conditions 2, I import those modifications again, and now I have a max min value and a number of steps. So maybe I say I'm going to do three steps for each one and my my minimum value will be 41, my maximum value will be 43. I'm going to do that for each one. And my factor is going to be 1.8 to 2.0. All right. All right. In my conditions one, I have. I'm going to do. Um, I've got my original, which is this number right here. And I have uh, my partial load for the area of the calculation. I have uh, a minimum of 100 and 100, so I can change this to one step. I'm just going to do this at max load, and I can cross vary this. And if I cross vary it, I know that I'm going to have. Uh, Three times three different solutions, so nine here and nine here, and nine times nine is 81, plus my original, I'll have 82 combination solutions. If I turn this off, I will have three here times, uh, let's see, three here times three here, nine, I think it's 12. Or 10. Yeah, it's be 9 here, and then plus the uh, original would be 10. So if I calculate it, it would be 10 solutions. Or if I turn this on, and calculate it should be 82. So I'm going to go with 82 solutions. I don't know. I don't. It may or may not get better. Um, this might take about, you know, four or five minutes for this number of solutions. So we're just going to hold out and wait for that to con to uh, finish cranking out. Okay, we're back, and we have sub 82 solutions that we can look at. And if I go ahead and run my peak-to-peak um, -peak transmission error, I can sort this from small to big. You can see 4.307 is my original solution based on this number zero. And um, that's the best solution that I have at this point. Now, I can do more iterations and solutions. I can look at this graphic, and I can see... Um, relative transmission error, so one being the original and the rest of them out here. Um, I can also look at my graphic too and uh, look at a, a range of values. Okay, peak to peak. One is way down here and everything else is kind of up here. 
right? Um, these are pretty good graphics. Yeah, you can use those. Relative transverse under load. You can look at uh, maximum Hertzian pressure as well. And you can see this one is way down. So uh, in this case, uh, in my results, it looks like my baseline, which was the original one that we um, came up with, is the one I'm going to accept. I'm going to close this or cancel it. I could write a report on that too if you want. And then you can see how easy it is to uh, to put in a a different list of modification sizings and how fast you know that took about really five minutes. Um, I stopped the the recording there just so so you wouldn't have to sit through that. But uh, if you had a uh, hundred or two hundred or maybe a thousand of these iterations overnight, you could do that. Um, do it at the end of the day, so you don't have to sit here and kind of watch your computer calculate. The contact analysis here, we can see uh, 4.3, and specifically we can look at the Hertzian pressure on the tooth of this gear, and you can see it's uh, a nice broad band here. Um, additionally, we could go up here and look at the, uh, let's see, we wanted to see the normal low distribution normal force curve along the length of pack contact. So you can see it, it uh, comes up. This uh, point here, this, this high point, is probably where we're first coming into contact. We'd like to have this come up and around and be as broad as possible and then back down. Typically is what we'd be looking at. So well, maybe right here I need to put in a arc type of a, a change or maybe I need to lengthen that, uh, th that out a little bit more to get a better contact patch. We want to get rid of this high point right here. That's what's giving us our transmission error. So pretty powerful tool, easy to use. Uh, if you have questions, you can call me. You, know, you can email me for sure at ty.warner at kissoft.com. You can go to our website, www.kissoft.com. That's kissoft, K-I-S-S-S-O-F-T. And you can uh, inquire about software. You can ask about how to run the software. We have tutorials. We can help you out. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again.